everyone. This video is about a very important statistic called the confidence interval, and it's going to be very important for us to use to determine if there's a significant difference between a measured quantity and a known. So just a little bit about the confidence interval. It tells us the likely value of the true mean. So maybe you're wondering, don't I ever really know the true mean? And I think that depends on the sample. If you think about some of the samples you might be analyzing in lab, maybe from Duck Pond and Boone Creek, you're not going to ever be able to measure the total population of Duck Pond or Boone Creek. It's always going to be a sample of the population, so you'll never really know the true mean, only the likely value of it. And we can have different levels of confidence in this value. For example, we can be 50% confident, 90% confident, 95% confident, and so on. And finally, the confidence interval depends on the so-called student T, and I'm showing you a table of student T's from your Harris text. Uh, again, you can see that it, it's organized in these columns with different levels of confidence. Notice that 95% confidence is in a different color because that's the most common level of confidence that we use in our calculations. And also notice that it's organized according to the degrees of freedom, which again was n minus 1. So the formula that we use to calculate a confidence interval is the mean plus or minus some range that's given by t times s, the standard deviation, over the square root of n. So I think one of the most important things to remember when calculating a confidence interval is to use the correct t. So let's see if we can do an example. Let's see if we can find the 50% and the 90% confidence intervals for these lead concentrations, and they have the units of parts per billion. Anytime I'm asked to calculate a confidence interval, the first thing I do is count how many data points I have. One, two, three, one, two, three, that's five. And that means that the degrees of freedom are four. I like to do that just to make sure that I use the correct value for t. So the 50% confidence interval is going to be the mean plus or minus some range. So I'll let you calculate the mean on your own. I got 12.5 plus or minus ts over the square root of n. So we need to find the value of t at 4 degrees of freedom and 50% confidence. So here we go, 4 degrees of freedom, 50% confidence, that's 0 0.741. So we'll plug that here, 0 0.741 times s, the standard deviation. I got 0 0.4 with an insignificant 0 0.4 all divided by the square root of n, which is the square root of 5. So the 50% confidence interval is 12.5 plus or minus 0 0.1, and I guess those units are parts per billion. So we can do something similar for the 90% confidence interval. Uh, again, that'll be 12.5 plus or minus, and now we've got to find the value of t, at 4 degrees of freedom and 90% confidence. Let's go look at our table. Here, here it is, 4 degrees of freedom, 90% confidence. That's 2.132. And everything else is the same. So when I did the arithmetic, I got 12.5 plus or minus 0 0.4 parts per billion. So oftentimes the way that we interpret a confidence interval is we say that we can be 90% confident 
that the true mean falls within this interval. We can be 90% confident that the true mean falls within this interval. And isn't it interesting to note that when we're only 50% confident, that interval is smaller, isn't it? That is okay to interpret the confidence interval that way, but really there's more to it. There really is a lot more to a confidence interval. Imagine doing an experiment where we measured the lead concentration in water. And imagine doing that experiment. So on the x-axis, this will be the experiment number. We did it one time, two, three, four, five, and so on, maybe almost an infinite number of times. And let's imagine that this is the true value, the true lead concentration. So imagine that we did our first experiment. We got a mean and uh, let's say it's a 90% confidence interval. And then we did the experiment again, experiment two, we got a mean and a 90% confidence interval. And then in experiment three, we got another mean along with its 90% confidence interval, and so on and so on and so on. What the meaning of a confidence interval is, is that these, this 90% confidence interval is going to include the true mean, again, that's this value here, the 90% confidence interval will include the true mean in 90% of the experiments. So I know that's a little bit confusing, and that's often why somewhat incorrectly we say, like we set up here, we can be 90% confident that the true mean falls within these intervals. So again, we'll use the confidence interval to determine if there's a significant difference between a measured quantity and a known, but I'll save that for class. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for listening.